Do you know how to replace a pump on a flow center? Today I'm working on a geothermal system. I'm replacing a couple pumps for a flow center because I've got some damaged pumps. If you want to learn more about geothermal, I've got some videos on my playlist HVAC tips for technicians. I've got a guide I can send you to help you understand more about geothermal systems, what tools are used, typical loop sizes, typical loop configurations. If you want that guide, click the join button, become a member, go down in the comments, say I joined, and I will give you my email. That'll lead to contact with me, and then I can send you that geothermal guide that I've got. Before we begin, click that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's go learn something about geothermal. Here is the flow center and the pump on the right is not moving at all. And the pump on the left is making some pretty horrendous noise, which I'll show you before we do the replacement. This is the geo unit here. This is a water furnace and I've got my gauge on the bottom here and standing pressure. It says I have about 16 PSI. I'm on the outlet connection, the PT. I'm using my loop goosing tool. So I'm gonna go turn the unit on, let you listen to the pumps, and then I'm gonna start the replacement or the installation of the new pumps. Here's my new pumps right here. Burp me. I'll show you what that's about here in a minute. All right, let me go upstairs, turn the thermostat on cooling. I've got my 3H drive right here. I'll show you what I'm gonna use that for on the flow center here in a minute. Got my tool bag. So I'm ready. All right, so I turned the unit on cooling and you can hear that cavitating. That's the pump on the left right here. And this right pump uh, is doing nothing. So, and what I did to find out if it was bad was, of course I checked voltage to the pump and then I took the little vent screw here so that you can look at the shaft and you can see whether it's spinning or not. So if it's got voltage, it's not spinning then the chances are the pump is bad. And if it's making a terrible noise, then you need to check the water, of course, because if this pump doesn't have water, this flow center doesn't have water, that's not good for the pumps. And that's what happened with this flow center. This flow center is six years old. And when I got to the geo and turned it on, there was no pressure, okay? Right now there's pressure, see, because I pumped it up with pressure. Okay, a little bit of rust. See, that's moving and take this one out now although we've got voltage nothing not moving at all so we got a problem now what I'm gonna do before I start changing these pumps is I'm gonna take my 3 8 drive my socket I'm gonna put it right there and I'm gonna change the position of these valves. Therefore, cutting the loop off from uh, this side, from the equipment. So I'm gonna separate the loop and the equipment. It's the first thing I'm gonna do. And of course, I'm gonna shut the power off for the geo because the pumps are powered by the geo unit. All right? Hear that? That doesn't sound good. All right. Put that vent screw back in. All right, now take the 3 h drive, put it in there, turn it. All right, got the power done. Oh, change this and turn this the other way. All right, now, now we can take just the motor off with a Allen tool. See this one, two three four we'll disconnect the power and then take these two motors off here because we're going to change both and probably leave this one here so that they can use this as a backup if they ever need it but this is six years old already having to replace it because we ran out of water don't know what the problem is yet but we're going to figure that out could be the loop that's leaking or it could be the manifold outside it could be the coaxial need to do some further investigation to figure out where exactly the leak is because water just doesn't disappear. So we got to figure it out. All right. That was off. 
I don't know. I got the wire. Make sure you know exactly what size the pump is. How do you know that? Take this, turn it sideways. It says right here, UP2699. And both of these pumps are the exact same. And the voltage is 230 volts, okay? So we got two power wires on the ground. All right, so just gonna unwire this. And if you don't have any power to the unit, that means you don't have any power to the pumps. So make sure that you cut the power to the unit. All right, once I get the power disconnected, then I will start using the Allen tool to take the motor. See that green ground screw right there? That's what holds the ground wire. And this right here is the bit I use. This is a star bit. Just wanted you to know that you can have the star bit or a flathead screwdriver for this screw. And now we've got the half inch Romex connectors used for this MC, this armored cable here. We've got those loose and now we're ready to take the wire loose and get these pops out of here. So exciting. Make sure that you've got different types of bits because you may need a different bit for a different project or job. It's hard to focus in on that little bit there, isn't it? Okay, little bit. You don't want me to focus on you? There you go, buddy. Boom. All right. Notice how this is not Romex wire. This is MC armored cable here, AC, MC. Wires are loose, half inch Romex connectors are loose, and now I need to take the wire out. Beautiful. All right. So I just slid it out one side because these are so close. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to take and put my little star bit back, and I'm going to get an Allen tool bit, preferably this one right here, and then I can make this process a little bit faster. Now, let me show you what I do. I use my extension. A little Allen tool bit, and I'm just taking and making this pretty easy. Look at that. Look how easy that was. Super simple. Notice how all four screws are out now. One, two, three, four. But the pump is still on the flow center. Take a nice tug. It's a all right, I'm going to do a little tap, tap. Oh, yeah. Now. Wow. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. That is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, a little tap, tap. Oh, wow. All right, so that's the good pump. This was the good pump. This right here is the bad pump. Wow, notice any difference here? Oh wow, I just broke right off. Perfect. All right, so I definitely need to uh, get this out of here. This is the good pump, and this is the bad pump. I'll be able to. Oh, okay. All right, got the little impeller off. So now it's time to take my motor apart, my new motor, by taking the Allen tool right here, my drill, and right there. Doesn't get much easier than that. I got the motor and the impeller, I don't need the housing. So, all right. Now, right here, there's one motor. Oh yeah, one thing you do wanna do, you wanna make sure that the gasket's on there, okay? There's a gasket right there, see that? Gotta make sure that gasket's on there, otherwise you'll have some leakage. And also, you wanna check the scale inside because if there's enough buildup of scale, you're gonna have the same thing out in your new motor. So you might need to pull these off and check. You might need to have a new flow center. All right, let's go ahead and get this other motor taken apart. And uh, yeah, let's put it on. We'll start the wiring process. We'll fill the loop back up. All right. All right. Beautiful. All right. New housing. New pump. And pump goes on like that right there. Make sure that the gasket is on there. All right. Beautiful. I'll put the rest of the screws in. Start wiring it back up. We'll need to take these stickers off because when we start filling up the loop, we'll take these screws out and burp. Burp me. We'll take them. It helps to vent the air out. So this is like a uh, air vent valve, basically. Valve. All right, both the pumps are mounted on the housing. So now we're ready to wire up the power for both pumps. You can see there's two wires, two power wires for each pump. We got L1 and L2 and then a ground. And the way this is going to hook up is it's going to hook up with those two wires going to this wire and this wire, which is going to provide 230 volts. And then this will be the ground. So to get the ground screw and the ground wire connected properly, I move the capacitor out of the way temporarily just so that I have more room to work. Using ring terminals for your ground wire connection is really easy and a really good way to make sure that your ground wire is connected properly. 
now that I've got my ground wires connected to the ground screws, I can put the capacitor back in its spot and I can wire everything up. Beautiful. I want to make sure we tighten these back up. These half inch Romex connectors, make sure they're nice and tight. But uh, it's looking good, man. New pumps. Wow. It's like a new haircut, man. So nice. All right. So now the cover should go on pretty easily. Get the other cover. Make sure that goes on the sides correctly. We are almost ready. I'll show you where these pumps are providing power from the geo unit. All right, now that we got it ready to fire up, let's take my driver, a little socket, my 3H drive here. Let's get my 3H drive and change the position of the valves. All right, so this one. All right, make sure it's straight up and down. And then change this one to go towards the inside. All right, now, gotta make sure that we have one. Now that our valves are in the right position before we start the geo, I'm going to get some water ready, okay? Look at the pressure we're reading here, five PSI. All right, let me get some water. It's time for power. All right. Now, we don't need to run these pumps without water. Here's my other glove. So I'm gonna make sure I add plenty. Now I'm on the inlet connection right here. Okay, into the geo. See what happens when I open it up? It is pushing that water in. I wanna make sure when those pumps start running that I've got an ample amount of water. All right, so that is the power wire from the pump. Runs alongside of the geo unit, goes into the geo unit. And then these, this is the power for the pumps. It lands on looks like a PB1 and it says source pump power supply. You can see there are some relays here and you've got a gray wire and you've got a yellow wire, right? And they land on a relay and there's a fuse in line too. I'm going to show you this on the schematic now. See, that's our external pumps lands on PB1 and then you've got a yellow and a gray wire and it's a normally open contact that closes to provide power to that pump so the board controls when that relay closes based on the call so it looks like it's about to come on now remember you got an inline fuse so if you don't have power at the pb1 you need to check the fuse if you've got power into the board all right now units on it was on zero pressures. You see that? You saw that. Wow. So we definitely need pressure, right? It was on zero PSI. Pumps are running and we're below 10. That's not good. See, it's going to go below 10. Not good for pressure. All right, we're going to pressurize this loop. Let's turn it on for a little bit. And then we're going to take the screws out of the ends of those pumps there. All right, we'll let this run for a little while. Let me give you a better view. So 28 PSI, all right, I'm gonna let it run. All right, we're gonna take the vent screw out. See, that's what it's supposed to be doing. We're gonna take this screw out as well. Water's gonna start coming out of there. Oh, by the way, don't use a drill. All right, both of these shafts are turning, both pumps are running, it's a good sign. Check your water hose outside. I had a water hose that was leaking way too much. Now that I've got a different water hose, it's not leaking. Watch the pressure now. So now we're filling up at a really good rate. So over 50 PSI, nice. This is gonna make a really big difference and I'll be able to fill up the loop faster. In the meantime, I'm gonna get rid of this other water hose covers back on here beautiful I no longer have to access these valves beautiful pumps are about three four hundred dollars a piece if you were curious the motors that's what they cost flow center is about a thousand dollars to replace so doesn't take very long if you have to change just the motors though this whole entire job you know probably an hour 
if this loop was being used, then you would also use this pump right here. And on the schematic, this pump would be controlled with this relay. And this relay is CR1. And there's an inline fuse as well to protect against a power or a pump issue. And if you want to use this pump, then you'll need to see note six. So on the schematic, you come down here and it says note six, domestic hot water pump only in models with hot water generation option. All right, so this is an option, but wanted you to see that. All right, because our pump right here is controlled with CR2 and there's an inline fuse on L2, fused L2. Look at that, and that's a 10 amp fuse. Wow, guess that's because there's two pumps. Okay, so we've got these vent screws loose just a little bit to let the excess air out and bleed the water. And when there's water coming out of this screw, that means that there is no longer air in this part of the loop so and that means that our loop is getting close to being filled up with water and if there's no water these pumps will be hot so that's why we need that water we do not need early pump failure and also while you're filling with water it's easy to fill while the pumps are on so keep that in mind okay so let's turn it back off see where we're at Check out my other videos on my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got other geothermal units that I've worked on and I've videoed my experience for you. Also, remember that guide. I've got a geothermal training guide. I'll send that to you. Just click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments. Say I joined. Definitely still need pressure. All right. Okay, so we're back on the inlet here and we've closed up the connection for the PT port on the outlet side and you can see there's only three psi or four that is not good let's open it back up and fill this thing up with water we are still lacking water i'm going to continue to fill it up and get this thing back up in good shape and if we find that there is a hole in the coaxial then we'll have to replace it but i don't see any water around the coax so that's probably not the case it's probably a water issue in the loop and if it's a water issue in the loop then i may have to add a valve right here i can add a valve so that they can actually have a regulator and a valve and a gauge so that we can hook up a line to the house's water supply and from the house's water supply into this flow center so that they can regulate the amount of water and maintain a certain amount of water to be able to ensure efficiency for this system. That's not ideal. We wanna dig the loop up. We wanna find the leak and fix it. We don't wanna just pump water in and waste it. So we will be trying to find out where the issue is. Standing pressure for this system so far, seven. And it's been on here a good minute. So I'm going to keep it moving, leave my gauge on here, probably come back in an hour and see where we're at. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions because questions lead to content. And I always look at the questions of all my subscribers, my viewers, especially my members. And I always answer those questions, try to give the best advice. Also, if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and where you're from. And before you leave, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want that guide I talked about, click that join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments and I'll send you that guide. If you need help with your project, you need tech support, I am here for you, okay? There are several levels of membership. There are several levels of membership and you can even have access to my phone number so that you can get in direct contact with me, get on a call with me so that I can help you if that's what you need. Or if you need a specific video done to help you, then I can do that, all right? You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me. 
Don't forget to check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. There are other videos of me working on geothermal equipment for you to be able to learn more about geo units.